Hello and welcome to Against the Storm, patch 0.42, the Rainpunk update, part 1. You would think that the biggest new feature in this patch is the Rainpunk system, or perhaps even the, the revamp to the Blight Rod system that they added, but no, it's not. The biggest update here is you can now build gates across roads. So you can now have your walled towns. Give that a try sometime. <laughs> no, really, that is a fairly minor piece of this update, in fact. And we're going to start off with uh, what the major pieces are, which is um, which is the rain punk use. Finally, the game, as it's been intended for a long time, uh, has been about a world where the rain never stops. And that rain is both dangerous and beneficial at the same time. However, they haven't really gone fully into all the rain technology that the game was supposed to have intended to have from the beginning and so they finally have gotten there with this with this update or at least have gotten part of the way there since this is part one with this update um, so the first piece of that is going to be this infused rainwater that comes from a storm water geyser We'll discover these on the map, and we'll be able to put a pump on them that looks like the building here on the left. And we'll be able to pump the, the, the um, infused rainwater out of the stormwater geyser and pump it into a, a host of other buildings. As you can see here uh, on, on on the right, for example, I believe that is a that's the new model for the smelter that takes the the uh, infused rainwater as a booster for the um, for the production of the items that, for the, yeah for the item production in the in the building itself. Uh, here's a f more focused view of the smelter. If that's the same building, I think it is. Yep, that's the smelter, and uh, you can see here in the in the image that there is a a bit of a um, there's 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 some new dials here, and those new dials allow you to control some of the different uh, the different rain engine performance speeds. And I'm, I haven't actually gotten in and, and experiment with this yet. Uh, we will do that in the main series. But you can see that you can control um, some different aspects of the of the building control. And what this does is when you use rain punk technology, um, you this now is what creates the blight rot cysts. So the more you boost your production, um, then the more cysts produce. But cysts don't just get produced on the building there that is using the Rainpunk technology. In fact, once the building is full, once it has three cysts, the cysts will start jumping to other buildings nearby, including houses and service buildings. That's the last of that one. So you can, um, so now Blight Rot is a much more um, expansive feature. Um, and it also has a bit of a randomness to it, which it didn't have before. Before you could pretty much predict, okay, I'm generating this amount based on the the, uh, the Blight Rot level or the, the corruption level of the recipe. I'm generating this much Blight Rot. It's gonna, you know, max out at this point. I need to, get rid of the cysts at, at this other point and then you know we can but but the the cysts are only on that building we don't have to worry about other buildings we can control it and limit it now it's a little bit more unlimited and um in fact we can um we can actually uh it's it's so unlimited in fact that it is an opt-in mechanic So you can you can either have this new blight rot system turned on or off, whereas in the previous difficulty in the previous system it's turned on automatically with certain difficulties. So this is part one. Part two will be coming. I'm assuming in in two weeks, or it actually does say in two weeks, and they're going to continue to develop the new blight rot rain punk systems, probably with some feedback from the community, the the wide community of players. And also some stuff that they wanted to add that they haven't added yet. They also want to address the fact that uh, Spark Dew may be confused with rainwater, and they want to make sure that uh, 
they can balance the two and separate the two logically um, because they don't want any confusion between those two um, those two resources. There's also some uh, uh, improved user experience in the training expedition panel and some bug fixes. The new level cap is 17 and some new Citadel upgrades. So the rain, rain poke technology is not always on a building. You have to install a rain engine in a production building in order to boost product productivity using the infused rainwater. So there's a new rain punk tab in the building UI, which we actually saw in uh, that screenshot, uh, the previous one, right there. And you install the rain punk engine. There are two modules, primary and secondary engine. The first one increases productivity. The second one influences working conditions. You need to make pipes from metal in order to pay for the rain punk engines. So that'll be another use for things like copper and I'm assuming crystallized do. And there was talk, and I'm assuming it's still coming, for some additional metals too. Which also means that you'll want to make sure that you, um, that you can acquire some of those items uh, some way or other in the biomes that don't automatically offer, uh, say, mining copper, for example. You can freely control the rain engine power levels using the knobs on the two modules. The primary engine has three levels, increasing production speed and double yield chances. And the secondary one has only two, both increasing, work, increasing worker resolve. To power rain engines, you need a steady supply of the infused rainwater. And the geysers are found in glades. Geysers have an unlimited supply of water, but each geyser pump can only hold a limited amount of water in its tank. Workers in the geyser pump will gradually fill it up and try to keep it at the maximum level at all times if possible. Infused rainwater is automatically transported to buildings with rain engines installed, so it does not need to be carried by workers. We'll just pretend that it's being carried by pipes underground. Sounds good to me. The speed at which it's being used up depends on the level of power the rain engine is operating at. There are three types of water. Drizzle water, which is green, clearance water, which is yellow, and storm water, which is blue. Each type is used to power different types of production buildings. One geyser has only one type of water in it. Drizzle water is used to boost food production buildings. Clearance water is used to boost crafting oriented buildings. And storm water is used to boost industrial buildings. On uh, difficulty levels above Pioneer, using rain engines will cause blight rot to spawn. The more water is used, the higher the footprint of all recipes. Okay, so it is still triggered above Pioneer, but maybe because you have to build the engine, then you don't get Blight Rot until you build the Rain Punk engines on the buildings. So Blight Rot, Blight Rot will no longer generate passively with every production cycle. Its main source is now the Rain, Te Rain Punk technology system. The more Rain engines are used, the quicker Blight Rot accumulates in the settlement. Blight Rot can also be present in the settlement without, using, without the use of Rain Punk. These systems are not inseparable, and Blight Rot can come from other sources as well. Perks, Forest Mysteries, Glade Defense, etc. There aren't a lot of these in the game right now, but they will add more in the future. Passive Blight Rot effects are, are gone. Sis no longer add any bonuses. So basically you... There's no reason to keep Blight Rot cysts anymore. Um, they're going to generate if you use Rain Punk or those other effects, and you just want to burn them. Now, no, no passive effects. Uh, workshops fully infected with, with Blight Rot, which is three cysts, will now slowly spread it to nearby buildings. Buildings infected with Blight Rot can now be removed. If you remove a building with Blight Rot cysts, the, the cysts will simply move to another nearby host. There's a new panel in the HUD with a global summary of corruption levels. Clicking on the UI element will open the Blight Post panel. Blight Rot can be generated during a storm, which makes sense now. And the Blight Rot tab in the building panels has been removed. And with the changes to the it changes to the systems, it's no longer doesn't serve any purpose, but it's been replaced with the Rain Punk technology tab, so that's fair. The other rules of the Blight Rot system are unchanged. It activates during the storm, it corrupts the ancient hearth, and cysts need to be burned by blight fighters. The way that Blight Posts and Hydrants work is mostly the same. 
The two new gate decoration, the two gate decorations, gates and ancient arts can be arches can be placed on roads. Their size has been changed to three by one, and the middle part has no collider, so that you can put a road through it and they can walk through it. As I mentioned before, the maximum player level is now 17. It requires 1,200 experience points and unlocks three new cornerstones. There are also some new upgrades in the city. Uh, they, some of them have been added to the top in levels 16 and 17, and some of them have been added in the middle, pushing everything else up. So, uh, uh, Dim Square level 7 has a pack of provisions and bark bonus, and trader arrival time reduction. Brass Forge level 2 has been added in, uh, guaranteed planks on embark, and global production speed bonus. Wow, that's good. Obsidian Archive level 6, Rainpunk system unlock, and impatience reduction. Okay. So we'll have to make sure we can unlock Obsidian Level 6, Obsidian Archive Level 6, Monastery of the Vigilant Flame Level 5, Guaranteed Fabric when embarking, and Increased Burning Duration in the Ancient Hearth. Wow. I'm surprised at these guaranteed building materials, but I guess it makes some sense. Uh, First Dawn Company Headquarters Level 1, Additional Villagers as an Embark Bonus, and More Chances for Bonus Shields. And First Dawn Company Headquarters Level 3, Guaranteed Bricks when Embarking, and More Chances for Bonus Shields. Vanguard Spire level 9, wine delivery and cosmetics delivery as embark bonuses, and an additional node charge increase. Nine new orders tied to the Rainpunk technology system. I'm not going to read through them all, but they're all about things we've already talked about, so they make they make sense. Two new forest mysteries have focused again around uh, Rainpunk. Uh, Hot Springs is rainwater geysers produce pleasant heat in their vicinity. Geyser pump operators get plus 10 to resolve. And natural filtration. Using rain engines causes a lot less blight rot contamination due to the natural filtration processes of surrounding vegetation. The blight rot footprint rate in all rain engines is reduced by 50%. And one new cornerstone, driving water. Water is not only used to power engines, wood cutting speed is increased by 10% for every 150 units of water used in rain engines. Ooh, that would be good in like the marshlands or something like where wood tends to be a little bit slower to acquire. Uh, so they've added, or they've removed, sorry, the small distillery cornerstone from biomes without resin in trees, which makes some sense because it's a little bit harder to use with without having the resin. Uh, remove the Sinister Blight and Dire Blight modifier, modifiers from training expeditions. Blight Rock can already be adjusted in the training expedition UI, so they're redundant. Reshuffled some recipes in production buildings. Uh, pipes tier zero to the crude workstation. Pipes to the, pipes to the tool shop at tier two, remove the water skins recipe. And pipes to the smelter tier two and remove the crystallized dew recipe. Rebalance flight rot, blight rot footprints for all recipes in the game, so they can be scaled based on the rain engine level. All Rainpunk themed glade events that require goods to be solved can now also be completed using pipes. Crystallized dew is no longer a possible ingredient from Rainpunk themed glade events. They've increased production times across the board to compensate for the big bonus from rain engines and to create more space for production boosting perks. And the Blight Extractor Cornerstone is no longer in the game. They've also done a bit of UX and UI improvements as well as bug fixes, of course. I don't think I need to read through the uh, UI UX improvements, um, but if you are ever uh, wondering, you can follow, you can see their patch notes either on the uh, Steam page for the game or on AramiteGames.com. You can read through the details, and you can see um, you can see all the itemized details. Thank you all for watching this this short update video, and I will see you all in game tomorrow. Have a good one. Bye for now.